Hello Walla, this is Sean bringing you a strategy video for 12-4 in double spoiler. This video will be about Hatate only, because Hatate and Aya have very different strategies, and uh, I think Hatate is the more interesting character in this scene. And uh, this will be a shorter and simpler video than the 10-6 one that I made uh, before. I'm once again going to teach you the plan to get a high score. If you listen to my explanations, you will understand the methods behind uh, reaching our record score. So, what is 12-4? Well, first of all, I'll give you a short gameplay snippet so you can see what this scene is. Not going very well. I haven't played this in some time. Either. Oops. Well, there you go. That's what this scene is like. I personally enjoy this scene very much, <laughs> so I hope you will too. Anyways, um, here's some statistics, just like I did with the last video. I uh, made a little thing here. Here. Dodging difficulty, very high. Now, that is uh, debatable. The thing about the dodging difficulty in this scene is that uh, a lot of the time it's not really about reacting to RNG, although you do react to some RNG. Uh, but a lot of the RNG you react to, I wouldn't really consider as dodging exactly, like reacting to newest movements, for example. That's not exactly dodging. Uh, but reacting to the knife RNG. It's kind of like an aggressive dodging through everything, so very high. And um, if you try to take six back shots rather than my uh, five back shots, it might be some of the hardest dodging in the game. If you if you try that, it might be. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, mechanical difficulty. Well, it's not the worst, but. It's very easy to fail taking photos, it's very, very, very precise. And the luck factor uh, is worse than you might think. There's a lot of different variables that uh, changes in the luck that can completely change the outcome of your run. And it, it, on every photo, so uh, yeah. You will never get... You will never get anywhere near perfect luck. You will always have bad luck in some variables in your run. And uh, the timer is at uh, 200 seconds, it's very generous, you're never going to uh, need all of that time. Uh, even if you go for um, mostly front shots and you stall a lot, 200 seconds is plenty. Um, anyways, yeah, you can see that I try to do uh, take a lot of uh, back shots there. Um, but you can also take front shots rather than uh, just the back shots. The front shots are easier, so the more front shots you try to take, the easier you will make the scene for yourself. And uh, the back shots start getting really hard from the fourth back shot and onward, and gets uh, to an extreme point on the sixth back shot, which I've never managed to take the sixth back shot. I think it's possible, I just never managed to do it. So, a good compromise strategy is to take only three back shots. And then from the fourth shot onward, you take front shots instead. Um, yeah, by watching and understanding the pattern, you come to understand what game plan might be most suitable for you. And uh, it's always possible, uh, you know, if you get a good run with uh, two back shots, you could uh, start doing three. If you get a good run with three, you could start doing four and so on. So before I get into explaining the tactic, uh, I'll show you the current record. 
because this category is so fast paced, it might be hard to really process what happened, but uh, try your best to think about the game plan and then wait for my explanations after the replay is finished. And good job if you considered anything that I'm about to explain, any of the tricks and such. Okay. Okay, here is the record. I messed that fifth shot up a little bit. Other than that, this is an extremely solid run. All right, so you see, it's over. It's over so quickly, and everything happens so quickly. It's kind of hard to process uh, this scene. Yeah, this uh, run had a very strong first half. That's what makes it so good. The first three shots are all splendid. Great luck. Great execution. Uh, the fourth is almost perfect in execution, but almost, but not quite. And then the fifth, I actually messed that up a little bit. And then the last is pretty much perfect as well. And the luck was very good. All right, so before I start talking about the strategies and such, let me show you something that will be very important for you first. Here. These are hitboxes. You see uh, that bullet type in the middle, the knife? Well, that's the primary bullet you have to deal with in this scene. You do also deal with the glow bullets, but the glow bullets aren't... Um, the glow bullets are... The, glow, the size of the glow bullets is more kind of what you expect them to be. Uh, it's a circular shape, which is very slightly smaller than the uh, sprite itself. However, these knives... So the it's the circle shapes that are the hitboxes in DS. The square shapes are for earlier games. So, the DS actually has bigger hitboxes. So if you look at the knife, you can see that the circle is uh, extends beyond the sprite, quite a bit beyond. So, um, if you try to hug a knife, then you have to be a little bit away from the knife, so that your hitbox marker doesn't overlap with the knife. Because uh, otherwise, once you reach the center of the width of the circle, uh, you will actually die because you can see the circle is just that big and uh, that is important to know in this scene because on this scene the knives will often you will often have to move between two knives that are close together so um, it's important to be familiar with the hitboxes to know what you can and can't do because a lot of the time you get the option of diving between two knives that are close together and you have to instantly calculate if it is possible or not to go between them. And if it is possible, you have to weight the options in your head. Uh, it needs to be reacted to instantly because of the lightning past, fast pace of the scene. Can you go between two knives or do you have to make your way around them? And this is even more important because with Hatate, um, in order to make it behind Nua in time before the glow bullets kill you, you have to be super fast. You can't, you can't stay still. You have to instantly launch your way up like a missile, swift, like a ninja. Make it behind you before the glow bullets spread across the screen. And this is not too hard to do on the first three back shots, but on the fourth and especially the fifth, if you waste any time, you will not make it. You will die. So yeah. Uh, knowing the knife hitboxes I think is even more crucial with Aya than it is with Hatate, but still, it's uh, still important. So now that you know the hitbox, let me walk you through the plan um, by playing the replay, pausing to talk about the uh, details that will uh, allow you to understand the strategy better. So first of all, let me show you the rhythm. Oops, <laughs> I accidentally pressed X. Just a second.
Okay. Uh, there it is. There's the game again. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, here. The rhythm. Now, I might get the rhythm wrong a little at first, since you have to play a little before you know the rhythm 100%. So, I'll try to count the nice shot rhythm. You start counting from when Nue fires. And then you count to four. And on four, you have the nice shot. So, one, two, three, four. 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 But this is a front shot, so that timing doesn't apply on the front shots, only the back shots. So I hope you learned something from that. That's how you should be counting. If you're not counting, uh, you will not nail the timing as consistently. But this is this is not a scene where it is 100% necessary to count like some other scenes. But I would always recommend counting, always. Okay, um, now that you've learned that, let me more talk about more uh, specific stuff you can see in the replay if you pay attention and not more subjective things like counting so first of all you start the scene go to newest right hold right while charging and upright and then you will see this gap open up to you launch your way through it now this is where things get a little bit um odd maybe you might think this is odd so before the nice shot comes, Nua will move, and she might move left or right, she might move up or down, and she might not move up or down, she just left, right, upright, down, right, you don't know where she's gonna go. But assume that she will move towards you, because there's a slightly higher chance of her doing that. That's why I would, if I were you, place myself a little bit to her uh, right, and then hope that she moves right towards you, like this. See, she's gonna move. She moves left instead of right. So if she moves left instead of right, luckily for you, this is only the first back shot. If she does that on the third or the fourth or the fifth, you might just die instantly. But on the first, you won't die instantly. So if she moves towards you, things are very simple. You just position yourself right above Nuem. And uh, while charging, you do a charge aim. A charge aim downward, if you're uh, sitting still. But if you're moving while you're taking the picture, then you cannot aim. Then you should just charge and take the picture. Anyways, throughout all of this, remember to count to four, of course. Uh, that just doesn't apply while I'm uh, uh, pause buffering this replay. So because she moved left instead of right, what you want to do is uh, at the right time, right before you want to take the picture, unfocus. Don't focus. If you focus, you will probably lose the two-shot. Unfocus, and unfocus move left, and if she moves down, left and down. Let's see what I'm going to do here. There's the unfocus. I'm holding left, and I press down. And now, because I unfocus, that will bring the camera closer to Hatate than if you are uh, charging, or especially if you're focusing, it gets too close to Nua and too far away from Hatate. That means that you are free to aim down slightly. There it is, slight down aim. Now if you look at that photo in the bottom left, you can see that it's almost a pixel perfect, if not pixel perfect, but I don't think it's pixel perfect, but it's almost pixel perfect at least, uh, two shot. So you want to be very careful with that. You want to put your camera as far down as you can without losing the two shots. And that's where the aiming, the charge aiming and the unfocused aiming comes in. It's subtle 
and it might be too hard for you. If you if you lose your two shot too much, consider not doing any aiming at all and just take the picture until you're more used to it. Now, after we've taken this picture, um, we can see this is 218,000. 218,000 is far from the maximum you can get on this shot, but there's so many different luck-based variables and some execution-based variables as well that makes the photo what it is. So the plan is for the photo to be taken straight, not at an angle, and you can see that we've managed to take a pretty straight photo here. And the second thing we want to try to do is to be close to Nua, but not too close. If you're too close, you will probably instantly die after you've taken the photo. So try to maintain a little bit of distance, unless you're feeling uh, very dare, daring. And um, the timing. So getting a 1.5 nice shot multiplier is nowhere near enough of a uh, good enough timing. W timing in this scene is important down to the very soon frames. It is so important to time just perfectly that if you are one zoom frame or two zoom frames off the perfect timing you do lose a lot of score it is really that awful <laughs> and to make matters even worse um, if you time your picture so that while the game is paused after you've taken the picture um, the game is not 100% paused but it will actually spawn a new wave of glow bullets if you've taken it at just the worst timing. And those glow bullets will kill you, almost 100% guaranteed. So, if you're far enough away from Nuwe, you might manage to avoid getting killed by those glow bullets, but just expect to die anytime that happens. It does happen from time to time, and there's no getting around it. So after you've taken the picture, what do you do then? Well, you hold down and left in this case, you could also hold down and right sometimes, depending on uh, which side of Nua you are on. So hold down and left. You're holding down and left, and then once you've gotten down and left enough, switch to just holding down. You can see that now I'm holding down. This is important because the later the phase, the more of these glow bullets Nua will spawn. And that means that the tighter it gets to escape after the photo, Escaping after the fifth back shot is usually something I die to because of how super precise it is and even luck based as well. So, yeah. Now, as for the next fo uh, picture, we want to position ourselves, uh, look at where Nua is, and look at what Hatate is, and try to memorize that relative position to Nua because. Um, the relative position you want to be from Nua is different on every face. On this face you want to be more to the left of Nua than on the third face. So here's the gap that you want to go through. Up and left and around. And this time we position ourselves to the left of Nua and we try to move Nua to the left. We try to bait her to the left. Let's see if Nua follows. This time she followed. So this time we don't have to do any unfocused movements. Just stay and wait and try to be um, perfectly aligned with Nua by the time you get to the nice shot. See here, we are still moving, now we stopped and now we hold down and aim and we take the picture. This time after the picture hold down and right. Down and right, and now we switch to a down. There you go. On the third phase, we position ourselves different relatively to Nue. This time, you don't want to be very much left of her. Rather, we want to be slightly left of her shoe. And you will see a gap opened up here. Go up and around. You will have to react to some RNG here, so beware of that. And don't be too slow, but uh, there is quite a bit of leeway in terms of time on the third back shot. Once again, position yourself to the left of Nua. However, if Nua is too close to the left side, you'll have to p position yourself to the right of Nua instead, because Nua won't be able to move any closer to the left. However, this time she can move left, so position yourself to her left. 
she moves left. Good. I was a little bit mispositioned, so you can see I unfocus move down and left. Very dangerous move, but because I'm trying to optimize as much as I do, I did it. Do a slight aim. And you can see, it's another very good timing and very good positioning and uh, very good everything, really. This time we hold down and left after the picture. There we go, and now we switch to down. Okay, now this is where things start getting tricky. Now I mean really tricky. Um, if you're not aiming too high, I would suggest that you start taking front shots here. And um, in this replay, the sixth shot is a front shot, so I can talk a little bit about the front shots when we get to that. But for now, pay close attention to my position relative to Nua here. Because what, we're, what I'm about to do is going to take a little bit of luck and uh, a lot of uh, precise timing. Okay, so look at this. The glow bullets are extending and here, this is the decisive moment. Right at this moment, there's going to be a tiny gap to my left. And you have to move into this gap. Here. There you go, you have to move into that. If you don't, you won't make it through. After we've moved into it, um, you can see that Nue moved right when she fired that wave. Nue moving right means that there is a red glow bullet above Aya right now. You can see, it. well, the game is paused, but um, there's a menu and to the left of the menu there's like a feather. Now, at the top of that feather there are still some red glow bullets. There is one right there, that is right above Hatate right now, that one. You want to move down to avoid that one. Because if you don't move down at all, you'll probably get killed by it, if Nua moves right. If Nua moves left, and if Nua, especially if Nua moves left and up, that glow bullet won't be in the way. Now, instantly, we want to hold up and make our way through these knives. Now, these knives are RNG, so you have to react to the knives. And that can be really hard. You want to make your way up fast, because as you can see, uh, we reach the top of the screen now, but these glow bullets will now cover the top of the screen. So if I was a little bit too late there, uh, I would have died to these glow bullets. Now, once again, try to position yourself to the side of New a little bit, preferably to her left here, and hope bait her to the left, hope that she moves left. New did not move left, she moved down and right. That makes things very hard and awkward for us. So an unfocused down right movement is what we want. And here's the down unfocused down right movement. We aim down a little bit. And there's the photo. Not a perfect photo by any means. Here, depending on which side of new where you are on, hold down left or down right. We are holding down right. Switch to a down. Otherwise, you will get killed by the glow bullets. Now, here's the fifth uh, back shot. In order to take the fifth back shot, you want a very different position from the first four. Here, pay close attention to the relative position between Hatta and Nure. You want to be far to her right this time, and not too far down, because that will delay your up movements too much. Okay, now here we go, there's going to be a gap to uh, Hatate's uh, upright, now I prefer to move up and right through the gap, but yeah, it might be different for you. It's gonna be right there, move up and right through it. It's a very precise timing, but it is possible, and now, on this photo you have to pray that Nua does not move left while she fires this way, if Nua moves left you're probably dead. And that is because that puts the three glow bullets, you can see there's one glow bullet to Hatate's right, there's one glow bullet above Hatate, and there's one glow bullet to Hatate's up left. Now that glow bullet to Hatate's up left is going to position, be positioned much more to the left, and more left and down, if Nui moves down and left. If Nui moves up and left you might have a chance, but yeah, just pray that Nui moves right here. 
Now, in order to avoid that glow bullet, after you've made your way into this gap, focus and hold down a little bit. Here it is. I'm focusing and I'm holding down. That is to make sure you don't get killed by that glow bullet. As soon as the glow bullet has passed you, unfocus and hold up. Pray that the RNG lets you go through. If you look above Hatate right now, there's a, a, a lone blue knife there. That blue knife isn't gonna be a problem, but to the left of that knife, there's a pair of a red and blue knife. And that red and blue knife can be much more spread apart, and if they are much more spread apart, you will probably not be able to make it through, and you will probably just die to the RNG. But you can see I got really easy RNG here, so there's a nice and big gap up there. Hold up, and here there's another pair, the red and blue knife. The blue knife can be much more to the right than it is now. If so, you have to go around it even more. But in any case, you should always tap right at this moment, or slightly sooner. I'm gonna tap right now. Right. Always tap right. If you don't tap right, you will always die. And then, after you tap right, just keep holding up. And go around this blue knife. And if you look at these glow bullets at the top here, I just I was just barely in time. Otherwise I would have gotten killed by those glow bullets. Position yourself to the right of Nua and hope that Nua moves into you. Nua moved to the left, sadly. So I have to unfocus, move left and down. Aim down. We mistimed the picture a little bit. Hold left and down. Now these, this escaping this fifth photo will uh, kill you more often than not. There's no getting around that. I just happened to not die this time. And then hold down. There we go. Now as for this front shot. Um, first of all, you can take a back shot on the sixth photo. I am 90% sure that it's possible. I've just never managed to pull it off. But it is so ridiculously hard to do that on top of having a strong run at this point that um, I just gave up <laughs> on uh, the idea of actually incorporating that. So I'm sticking with the front shot. Now, the front shot score maybe in theory 30 or 40 or maybe even 50,000 less than a back shot can do. So, um, yeah, on the, on the fifth, on the fifth, I think uh, in theory, the back shot can score maybe 40 or 45,000 more. So it's a pretty big difference. So you really want to minimize the amount of front shots, front shots you do. But because the back shots are so hard and the front shots are much easier, well, here's how you do the front shot. Wait for these bullets. Now, this is RNG. Read a gap and go through that gap and do it quickly. Now, here's the gap I want to go through. I'm going to hold up, go around, and here is some uh, tricky RNG. You saw the knife hitbox size earlier, I showed you that, and you can see how little space there is between these knives. You're gonna have to do a pixel precise squeeze to go through these knives, sadly, but that's just what the RNG gave me. And uh, there it is. Now you have to make it through very quickly, because the timing is uh, something you have to do pretty early on the front shot. You actually sacrifice the nice shot. You don't want the nice shot when you do a front shot. But instead, you take the photo earlier and you get more base value because you can get more bullets in the picture because you take the photo before all the bullets have extended outwards too much. So, unfocus your way up. Start focusing before you make it close to new air. If you're not focusing, the camera will be too close to Hatate and not close enough to new air, and you will lose a lot of base value. So start focusing don't sit still when you focus, you have to focus before you get close to Nua and then keep moving up while focusing to control the camera. So we're gonna do that. And then you wanna stop right before you get killed by the bullets that are extending outwards. So now we're gonna stop and then you take the photo. 
and you want to take the photo at this precise timing. If you take the photo slightly later than this, you will lose a lot of base value. If you take it slightly earlier than this, you will lose a lot of base value as well. You know you're gonna get a good timing on the photo if you're almost dead when you take the picture. You can see that these photos, uh, I mean these uh, bullets, are very close to killing uh, Hatata right now. And you get macro bonus. Now, how much macro bonus you get is down to RNG because of how new uh, might move and because of how the bullets might guide you into where your position is. But you want this to be a pretty straight photo. And if it is a very straight photo, you will have a pretty good macro bonus. So, there's the photo. What macro bonus did I get? 816. So, that means everything points towards this being a really good photo. So, when you take the front shot, uh, let me kind of show you. We're gonna just take some front shots here. Ah, oh, I can't go through that though. Every time you take a front shot, just wait one wave like that and go through the bullets like this. Oops, I died. You only need to wait a single wave when you take front shots. Now these front shots are far from perfect, like I mentioned, the timing is pretty precise. So you can see the strategy to take front shots, um, it's much easier, but it's far from trivial. There's a lot of reasons that it could go wrong. But try not to take any defensive shots, because taking defensive shots will... Um, well, there's a lot of stuff to explain why you, you should try not to do that, but if you do think the RNG is too hard, you could take a defensive shot and just hope that it works out. So what, what do you want to do when you take a defensive shot? Well, let me show you. Like, oh! Well, this RNG is too hard. Here's the defensive shot. Now we wait a new wave. Oh, well, this RNG is too hard. Let's say we think that. Defensive shot again. Now let's try to take this photo. There we go. Like normal. Let's say this RNG is too hard again. Well, then we take defensive shot again. There we go. And there it is. Now, the problem with doing this is... I think the biggest problem is you get an extra row of knives. After the defensive shot, you will always have one extra row of knives. At the top of the screen. Like, uh, not at the top, but like around the, the middle that you want to go through. And that means that you want to go through two rows of knives that are very close to each other. One is slower than the other. And depending on newest movement RNG, those two rows of knives could be so close to one another that you have to pray for amazing RNG to be able to go through. If newest movement RNG is better, um, you could be able to go through without great RNG. Um, so the RNG you want when you have two rows of knives, like this, is for the gaps to be aligned with one another. If the gaps aren't aligned with one another, you, you probably won't be able to make it through uh, without sacrificing too much time in the process. Especially not if Nua moves the wrong way because then the gaps are just too close together. So, yeah, pray for aligned gaps if you go for uh, defensive shots. That's not something you really want to pray for, so try to avoid taking defensive shots whenever you can when you're going for front shots. Alright, so uh, I think I've explained most of it. There's a lot more you could talk about, but yeah, I think I've explained the most important stuff. When you take these back shots, you're going to be moving while charging before you take the photo and what you want to try to do this is so important you have to stop a little bit before you take the photo if you stop too late the camera position relative to your hitbox will be wrong 
and you won't be able to aim downward, you will lose the two shot if you do so. Now the downwards aim, you only do it for a few frames. If you do it any longer than that, you will never get the, the two shot, you will always miss it. So beware of that. For beginners, I would say uh, don't aim at all and start aiming only when you start feeling like you really want that extra bit of optimization because it doesn't really do much to your score. It doesn't improve your score by a whole lot, very very little, but if you do miss the two shot you lose so much that yeah, the, the risk is pretty big. Anyways, um, that's it for this explanation. I hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah 12-4 such a cool scene uh, get into it you're, you're gonna love it at least with Hatate see you